there's a man camouflaged in the bushes. He just saw the cool thing. What the fuck? Or it's already out it's on Apple TV. It's called Cedric and Alicia. Yeah, I don't know how that happened because I never wanted to be an actor, but when the universe puts something in front of me, I trust it and I go with it. There's so many like little discoveries. Like I just discovered that the park that I live near is really trashy. I just discovered the most beautiful stray cat walking around. I discovered a problem that I could fix and I fixed it. <laughs> I'm really into this. I feel like I'm going into the woods. I've never done something like this. Ah! Hello, 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 and good morning. I mean, take a look at this day. It is just gorgeous outside. Yeah, there are a lot of clouds, but the sun is out. Actually, I should take my umbrella because Echo, is it gonna rain today? It probably won't rain today. There's only a 24% chance at 8 a.m. It probably won't rain today. So anyway, this is what I'm wearing right now. I'm about to go on a morning walk and I'm putting this little like, little layer over because I'm not wearing a bra. Oh! Okay, all right, but I want to show you. <laughs> and, you know, I want to be a little decent. It is currently 7.51. I have to say, this is the first morning that I don't feel like picking up the camera. Actually, I felt like canceling my whole day, to be honest. That's how I felt. Holy crap, I literally forgot that I saw a sign out in the park that I wanted to fix. So I asked Nicholas to like leave some zip ties out for me so I could fix it. And I forgot that I wanted to fix it, but I just remembered. And I think, you know what? I think if I had remembered that earlier today, I definitely would have felt a bit more motivated. I'm heading out. Usually I like to wear a hat when I go out because, you know, I want to look incognito because I usually look toe up from the flow up, but, um, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. Okay, let's go. I'm nervous, I'm nervous because I'm excited about fixing this park thing. I'm, I don't even know if you can do that, but I'm gonna do it. I'm usually not a shy person, but I'm seeing people walking around right now and I wanted to like pull out my camera and say something and I just got super self-conscious and I don't know what that's about. So right now there are like people walking right in front of me. There's so much like life and activity going on right now and I feel le less self-conscious when I'm like filming in the city, but filming around my house or like in the Bronx or not in the city, uh, I don't know why, but I'm just feeling so self-conscious. Okay, so some people just ran past me and I think I know why I'm feeling self-conscious because I don't want to feel like I'm uh, intruding in anyone else's space with a camera. Like I don't want them to think that I'm just carelessly recording them and violating like their space. So basically when those people ran past, and, oh, there's a bus. Oh. Oh. That's why they ran. So that's the sign I wanted to fix. I just saw it that way on one of my morning walks and it, it annoyed me. So I'm just gonna fix it because I just don't understand why no one is fixing it. I'm sure there are like park people who come and clean up the park, hopefully. Cause I mean, look at that. And maybe I'll even like come and start cleaning up this trash because like, look, they have a trash can over there. I don't know if you can see it. And like no one uses it. So I gotta come out here with like my gloves and pick up the trash and put it in the trash can because this is crazy. Obviously I used white ones because they didn't have black ones, which is the one they originally used. And I took out this old nasty piece of wire that they had tackily holding it up and I replaced it. So it looks beautiful. Yeah, I saw in this Chelsea Handler video that she was like volunteering with New York's sanitation department, I think, to like clean up for her neighborhood and stuff. And I really think I might want to look into that because I mean, obviously I, don't mind coming out here and doing this myself but it's a lot and i know it can get overwhelming and honestly like one person with zero resources cannot save the world or a park oh my gosh and across the street from where i was like zip tying the thing there was a guy who lives in my building standing there watching me so and the reason why that's strange is because last year i was the president of the board of my building where i live 
and I didn't want to be the president of the board of the building where I live, but it ended up that way. I was sort of like tricked into it because I was naive. So just by virtue of my position, stumbling over a bunch of problems that we had in our building, and it was up to me to figure out what to do. And I guess I could have resigned, I don't know, but I just, you know, I saw a problem and I'm a Virgo, so I see a problem and I want to fix it. So I dove right into trying to fix it. And I did what nobody else has ever done in that building for like 30 years, which is I canvassed my entire building, 85 families, to get them to show up and participate. And I was very successful and I made a lot of changes in the building, just myself and one other person who I was pretty much coaching and leading, even though I don't have any experience working on a team i don't have any experience working with people because i'm a dementia caregiver i work one-on-one -on -one with a person who's very ill who often has um difficulty speaking so for about a decade i didn't have any experience communicating with another human being well and actually as a result i started developing an aphasia which is like an impairment of speech because i was doing like 60 to 90 hours a week working in an environment where it was just me and one other person who couldn't speak well i didn't realize but from the stress, I was kind of developing an impairment of speech. And that's one of the reasons actually why I wanted to get out there and socialize and meet people and, and get some like experience speaking again. And as a result, on one drunken night, I ended up signing up for an acting class. When I woke up the next morning and I was sober, I realized I made a big mistake and I wanted to get my money back, but I had bought the acting class with a couple of discount codes and I couldn't get my money back. So I just thought, you know what? the universe so I ended up in an acting class and five years later I'm in a movie that's coming out on Apple TV I don't know when I'm posting this video but it could either be coming out in a couple weeks or it's already out on Apple TV it's called Cedric and Alicia but yeah I don't know how that happened because I never wanted to be an actor but basically you know when the universe puts something in front of me I trust it and I go with it but that's how I ended up in acting because I wanted to socialize more with other people and try to recover my speech which I was able to do and I have to say that I didn't recover my speech as well in acting. I'm recovering my speech on another level and way better now that I'm vlogging, which only started last October of 2023. And I started vlogging because I had gained a different level of confidence through my experience with acting. So all the steps I took from 2018 until the current moment helped me accomplish my goal of like rehabilitating my communication. I. I don't remember the last time I saw a stray cat, and there is one right there. Yeah, I'm really falling in love with this like morning walk situation because there's so many like little discoveries. Like I just discovered that the park that I live near is really trashy. I just discovered the most beautiful stray cat walking around. I discovered a problem that I could fix and I fixed it. <laughs> I'm really into this. Definitely do not shy away from opportunities that the universe presents to you. Follow your gut, basically. And you know what, if you make a mistake, that mistake is probably what you're supposed to be doing, where you're supposed to be. Because I made a mistake when I signed up for that acting class um, because I was like dead drunk the night that I signed up for it. And, oh, the sun. Um, yeah, I wanna stay in the park. So I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna go around that rocky area there under the influence of alcohol <laughs> my brain was relaxed enough to really make an executive decision on my behalf because it saw something and it was like oh this might work for you because i was like scrolling through groupons and there were a lot of like different things to do let's see um so i, I really don't want to be like sitting dead in the sun sun all right let's see if i could find another spot I feel like I'm doing a journal entry right now. This is, ah! <laughs> this is so fucking fun. Okay, um, where did I wanna go? Now this is starting to feel a little bit creepy because I feel like I'm going into the woods. I've never done something like this. Ah! <laughs> There's a dead rat <laughs> and it's smushed. Oh my God, I'm not gonna show you. <sighs> oh fuck, okay. All right, but I want to show you, uh, and I want to run. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, oh God! Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> oh my God, this is so bad. 
<gasps> I'm freaking out. What if I just accidentally stepped on that? Oh God. Oh, oh no, I just saw a man just like hiding in the bushes. Oh my God, he just saw the whole thing. He's just like, he's camouflaged in the bushes. There's a man camouflaged in the bushes. What the fuck? Okay, maybe this is not safe. <laughs> Even though it's like eight o'clock in the morning. All right, I'm gonna show you guys, okay? I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> it's right there. It's right there. I don't know if you saw that and I'm going to be traumatized during editing but uh, I'm gonna now just go back this way oh fuck oh I'm sorry I'm sorry for all the cursing I just my heart is racing I <laughs> I've been so far away far removed from creepy crawly creatures that <clears throat> I just imagined like stepping on something and crunching bones like that's literally what I just imagined no I was just talking about how happy my morning walks at are and now I'm just like traumatized oh hell no okay so maybe I can go there which is like closer to the street and um I'll be safe yo I literally was about to walk up to that guy who was camouflaged in the bushes that's crazy. I see a lot of flies now what are they swirling around? Oh my gosh, this is this is a nightmare. Yeah, so my brain made this executive decision to sign up for this class while I was drunk one night with my husband in the privacy of my own home, just having fun. And when I woke up this next morning, it felt like a mistake because at the time we were trying to buy our first home together. And oh my god, if I if I tell you the traumatizing process of trying to buy my first home because I had never imagined myself buying a home, that's the first thing. I'm breaking off an attempt right now. Number two, I didn't feel like I trusted Nicholas enough to make that big of a commitment. We weren't even married yet because I didn't believe in marriage. Like marriage, it's not that I didn't believe in marriage. I just, to me, marriage felt like, oh, there's all this noise here. I hope it's not, I hope you're not like hearing all of it. Marriage to me felt like a, a business transaction, a financial transaction. All right. <sighs> Guys, I'm gonna start walking because I really don't know if you can hear all that noise in the background. So yeah, I see marriage as a business transaction. So it didn't have any meaning to me, especially because I don't come from a family where marriage is a thing. Like the male mentors in my life were men who cheated on all the women that they were with, had multiple kids, etc., etc. All the female mentors in my life had conflicting messages about how you need to be to keep a man and all of that even though they couldn't keep their man and they were being what they were trying to teach me to be and it, I'm not saying that they couldn't keep their man I'm just saying that they weren't reflecting on the contradiction of their message which is you can't keep a man with all these gender role stuff because it's so unnatural I'm sorry but it's so unnatural like a man and a woman or any two people deciding to live together should be like cultivating their relationship and building their relationship based on their strengths and weaknesses weaknesses as individuals not as some pre-existing gender role dynamic or expectations of each other because you're gonna run into a lot of shit you know what I mean like how unnatural is it to think that women should be doing the child raising and all of that when most women doing that get really overwhelmed by how most of them want help and even if they have help from all the women in their family most of them don't want their men to like spend their own free time doing their own thing doing their own self-care stuff hanging out with friends going to the gym going out for drinks and stuff and like having very minimal participation in the family meanwhile the woman is at home doing all the like house management stuff child care management stuff personal management stuff and husband management stuff like what kind of gender role bullshit so i would listen to the woman in my family like tell me what i should be doing in order to be a successful woman and in order to make sure that i have a successful relationship with a man while none of them had a successful relationship so those were the mentors that I had in my life and of course the male mentors in my life were also telling me what I needed to do and be as a woman and the lessons they would teach me about what to expect from a husband would be complete freedom from my husband like my husband should have complete freedom to do whatever he wants so make sure that I'm not doing this and that and the other or else my husband might do this or like that kind of lessons so those were the kinds of role models I had in my life so everything that I was experiencing in my relationship with Nicholas between 2009 and 2017 
2018 was stuff that I pretty much had to figure out on my own because I couldn't rely on all the contradicting messages that I saw in society and what I saw in my family life. Everybody that I knew who adhered to gender roles did not have successful relationships. So, and I don't mean just family, I mean friends, I mean back in Trinidad where I grew up, when I moved to America, it was the same thing. Like, even though I was exposed to so many different people, I didn't find anybody in successful relationships. So I had mentors nowhere. And even when I saw like TV shows and stuff that where the gender roles were like showcased to sort of like teach us how to be, I guess, I didn't see success there either. I mean, think about it. It was so rare that you would see a TV show with like gender roles being displayed and the, and the relationship was successful. It all, it all ended up being the woman having to suppress so much of her own identity in order to make the relationship successful and I think suppressing your identity on any level is a mistake for a man or a woman. What we should be doing though is if we have habits for example that are maladaptive that's a that's an interesting word to use right but like if we have habits that are like negative coping mechanisms basically that's something that yeah that's who we are we shouldn't suppress those negative coping mechanisms just because they're trying to fit in, what we should do is expose them to ourselves, verbalize it, write it down on paper, start like being aware, becoming aware of what our habits, what our negative coping mechanisms are that might not be productive for us and might not be like productive in navigating relationships with others. And then start figuring out how to adjust that figuring out why you have those habits or those like negative coping mechanisms and then start rehabilitating that that's a very complicated process though i didn't really have much help doing that and when i say help i mean like medical help but i would recommend medical help however if you don't have access to medical help like i did not it is possible to do it on your own but you really have to destigmatize all of the unproductive things about you all of the things that are not working you have to destigmatize it you have to reframe it so that it's not negative it's just a part of who you are it's a consequence of being human and unfortunately it is a consequence of being human but you can adjust it that is the fortunate thing about being human is that you don't have to live that way forever you can actually make adjustments because your brain is that flexible and fluid wow this is such a beautiful day you know basically my whole point was that you know, I had to figure everything out on my own when it came to like building a relationship with Nicholas and healing from my traumas and deconstructing and healing from all of my coping mechanisms, everything that I was conditioned into and pretty much figure out who I was, help Nicholas figure out who he was because he didn't have the instinct and the intuition that I, that I sort of like started developing to decondition himself and he was still like blaming everyone in his past for everything that was happening to him instead of like being proactive to heal from it. And then suddenly for some reason when you blame other people it's not your problem to solve, it's their problem to solve even though they can't solve it because they're no longer a part of your life or you know whatever. And I think that's the like not so good thing about blaming others. Um, my, my battery is dying so let's see if I brought a spare battery. I have a spare battery! Phone is ringing. Oh, Marge is calling me. Hold on. Hello? There's a guy just running back and forth. That guy over there without his shirt. He just keeps making like very small circular runs. Maybe he's training for something. Anyway, look, me minding other people's business. Anyway, um, yeah, when you blame other people, like yes you can blame other people if you want because sometimes it is other people's faults but you still have to solve your problem you know what i mean like you still have to solve your own problem it's so windy in a in the best possible way but i don't know what it's doing for the audio <laughs> moral of the story is i had to figure it out on my own with nicholas and i did because we've had very beautiful successful 15-year relationship even though neither of us had any role models in our life 
I wouldn't I would say I'm way more healed from my like traumas and triggers than Nicholas is because a lot of his like cues and stuff comes externally from me as opposed to like internally from his intuition he is developing his intuition though so he's gotten so much better at just figuring a lot of stuff out on his own but um definitely when he's faced with like more complicated emotional situations he leans on me a lot to have the sort of like tools to help him navigate and when i say tools it's mostly just talking to each other very openly without judgment um that sort of like free communication yeah and i'm i'm just like having like full-on deep conversations in the middle of the street while people are looking at me while there are cars waiting on me etc etc that's one of the reasons why i love the vlogging process because you really end up in all of these novel situations new situations oh it's so busy this morning okay let me go because I'm, I'm about to like go into the grocery store right now